pretty much any time we talk about AI, which is often, mm -hmm. we inevitably get some heat down in the comments from people who think that we're being way too critical of a technology that will only continue improving at a super rapid pace. And within a few years, it'll be just totally essential to all of our lives. Mm -hmm. You damn lights! We're so short-sighted. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe some of those comments are AI themselves, and that's what I'm going to believe. Who's to say? If, and that's it, very exciting in and of itself. If, if it's so impressive that they can shit-talk us in our own comment section, then it really is learning. So AI haters like us complaining about how unreliable this stuff is, how it's no substitute for the work and creativity of real human beings, we're going to look real dumb real soon. Uh -huh. And uh, then we'll see who's laughing. Not us. They'll be laughing. Alone in their rooms with their AI girlfriends. Yeah, that's right. But I think we're actually kind of talking past each other here. Mm -hmm. Whether AI is good or bad isn't a yes or no question. Our issues with AI have to do with whether the massive hype around it is actually warranted and whether mass adoption of AI is good for human society. What we and the pro-AI people can and do agree on, though, is that this stuff can be really, really impressive. And if deployed correctly in ways that uh, have existed prior to the large language model stuff, can be helpful. Stuff like Siri and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, that's for boomers. Yeah, well. Siri, where's my, where's my son? <laughs> Where's my grandson? <laughs> Where's my son? <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us to Sora, mm -hmm. OpenAI's new text-to-video AI model, which is genuinely impressive. It is, especially the advancement in such a short amount of time. Uh, you got Will Smith eating spaghetti just a year, a year ago, and now you got Will Smith eating higher quality spaghetti. That's right. It's easy to forget that just two years ago, AI-generated images were low-res garbage, and AI-generated text was barely coherent. To the point where it was literally funny. Yeah, it was a joke. How bad it was. It was fun. And the AI images were essentially the computer version, well, the computer made version of deep frying a meme. Yeah, they were, uh, it was like automated uh, hallucinations. YouTube poops in yes. single image form. With swirls and eyeballs. Yeah. It looked like a tool album cover. Yeah. Uh, even when both of those things improved dramatically, AI generated video was still just an extremely low quality proof of concept. It was impressive not because it looked like it would change the world, but because it was really weird and borderline upsetting in a brand new way. The, of course, Will Smith eating spaghetti clips that went viral were a great demonstration of this. No one would ever mistake this for the real Will Smith eating spaghetti, but it was also still a technical achievement none of us had ever seen before. That was 11 months ago, though, and things have changed quite a bit, including the standing of one Will Smith, who I could now see doing B-roll footage for an Eastern European company uh, eating spaghetti. Yeah. Well, that's, that's believable. Uh, hey, he did slap that man, but look at him. He's embracing the meme. Yeah. There he is eating that spaghetti in high def. Yeah. So yeah, last week, OpenAI introduced Sora by sharing several high-resolution clips that to the casual or even keen observer looked like real video footage shot with real professional cameras featuring real people, places, and things or at the very least, created painstakingly by real animation and VFX teams. Mm -hmm. The AI evangelists immediately took a huge victory lap because, yeah, this is all incredibly impressive. This is a huge milestone for AI technology, an absolute game changer. As they explain in their press release, Sora is able to generate complex scenes with multiple characters, specific types of motion, and accurate details of the subject and background. The model understands not only what the user has asked for in the prompt, but also how those things exist in the physical world. The model has a deep understanding of language, enabling it to accurately interpret prompts and generate compelling characters that express vibrant emotions. Sora can also create multiple shots within a single generated video that accurately persist characters and visual style. So, we can all agree that this is a very impressive technological achievement, but there's still plenty to disagree on. And it is time to put on our hater hats. Got the jack and joggers on, got the hater hat on top, ready to dive in. So first off, there's the issue we have with all generative AI, which is that this was trained on the work of the very humans it seeks to replace. Secondly, can it actually replace those humans? Some of them, I guess, sure, probably, but let's be real here. Generating short video clips that you only have some degree of control over is still a long way off from generating entire movie scenes or entire movies. 
And that degree of control and specificity is crucial. Just because a clip by itself is impressive doesn't mean it's actually what the user needs for the specific project that they're working on. And you can keep rolling the dice and altering the prompt as long as you want, but that's not really conducive to anyone's filmmaking process. Also, like AI images, pretty much all of these clips, which are presumably the best that OpenAI has to show for its product, mm -hmm. have weird little glitches and oddities when you more closely examine them after that initial wow factor has worn off. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, in one of the most widely shared Sora clips featuring a woman walking down a street in Tokyo, uh, her legs just straight up switch places mid-walk. Her left becomes her right, her right becomes her left. It, I mean, it's a great clip otherwise, wow. But yeah, if you're an actual filmmaker making an actual film, that shit is not gonna fly. You can't put that in the movie. And there's no way for the AI to just fix that specific thing. It has to generate a whole new clip that might be completely different. It might not have what you're looking for. And to be fair, OpenAI also readily admits to these limitations. They say in the press release, the current model has weaknesses. It may struggle with accurately simulating the physics of a complex scene and may not understand specific instances of cause and effect. For example, a person might take a bite out of a cookie, but afterward, the cookie may not have a bite mark. The model may also confuse spatial details of a prompt, for example, mixing up left and right, and may struggle with precise descriptions of events that take place over time, like following a specific camera trajectory. Well, as much as I appreciate the infinite cookie glitch, it still doesn't yeah. work in a film. Yeah, well, that's good thing that I'm making a movie about the cookies that were unlimited. Yes. So take that, haters. Uh, I, I, I'm going to use these glitches to my advantage and make all my money. I, I, first of all, I want to say that, like, of course this is going to improve. But it also, like, with, with these small technical glitches, I could definitely see the process moving forward like Photoshop demonstrates their generative stuff where you highlight one part that needs to be fixed. That's in stills, though. Like, with video, I feel like that is not just, like, step two. I feel like that's... There's a lot well, of steps between with all of this stuff. Every, the, all of this innovation is A to C. There's no B. <laughs> it's yeah. like, we're going to do this and we'll figure out the rest along the way. And like what it comes down to is like, yeah, it's like, yeah, you look at this and you're like, this shit is 99% of the way there. And it's like, okay, well, when I watch a movie, my standards for what is acceptable yeah. are higher than what this puts out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they even go so far as to demonstrate some of these weaknesses with the clips. No, these are my favorite. My favorite thing. I wish they just, just showed us their mistakes. The, the, my thing with these that I noticed immediately, I'm sure other people have pointed it out, but there's this weird, whatever's happening with uh, the computer analyzing and producing this, it does a lot of things in reverse. It'll go forward and then something will happen backwards and it'll kind of morph into both of those. Yeah, there's a, it, it is... It is interesting. It's fascinating watching these clips. Like I, I watched all of them, and it feels almost um, like there's like some of the points are magnetized, meaning like when a spoon gets close to soup, it looks like it, like gets slurped into it or something. I, I can't explain well, it. Well, I don't it, know. Literally, it does not understand physics. Yeah. Yes. And physics <laughs> turns out physics uh, make up a lot of what we watch. Yeah. In there's a guy with a, and holding clips. a spoon, and he grows fingers around the spoon. There's someone cuddling with a cat where an arm appears. Yeah, it, uh, it has trouble with like limbs that get close to each other too. They tend to like switch places. Again, this, just looking at the past year alone, not even going back two years, but the past year alone, it's like this has gone leaps and bounds. It has, but it also, to a certain extent, they have polished a turd and the turd is very, very shiny and Absolutely. very smooth. It's a beautiful fucking turd, mm -hmm. but that's still made out of poop. That's right. Uh, but here's... Here in this one, they asked for a guy walking on a treadmill, and he is, but he's going the wrong way. That's a, that's a decent example yeah. of like the it not knowing. Yeah. What's what? Are, you told me to put a guy on a treadmill. There it Didn't is. Didn't say anything about which direction to go. I'm yeah. I'm in the AI. I don't know what a fucking treadmill is other than what it looks like. Yeah. Here they asked for wolf pups playing, and the number of pups changes quite a bit <laughs> during the 10 second clip, with pups sort of just spawning in and out of each other. Yeah, it's like uh, John Carpenter's. Uh, the one in Antarctica. Thing? Yeah. It's like the thing. Uh, it's an infinite puppy glitch. Yeah. Infinite puppy glitch. Hey, yeah. good thing I'm making a movie about the infinite puppies. 101 million yeah. Dalmatians. A, approximately 101 it's Dalmatians. It's got that squiggle line before the 101. <laughs> <laughs> Roughly 101. 
Yeah, you can't spell Dalmatian without AI either. That's true. Here they ask for a basketball going through a hoop and then exploding. And they get that. But the, then a second basketball shows up and morphs right through the rim like a hologram. It clips. This one, showing archaeologists digging up a plastic chair, goes totally off the rails with the chair levitating and shape-shifting like it's alive. Horrifying stuff. And on the more subtle side, this one of an old lady blowing out her birthday candles, or rather not blowing out her birthday candles, makes for a great game of Spot the Difference because there's a lot that isn't right. Yeah, it's uh, this one's a fun game. Watch that clip and just uh, list everything you see that is not quite right because there's some obvious ones, like she blows out the candles and the candles don't blow out. But there's those trick candles. You just zoom in on any part of it and you're like, oh, there's weird fucking shit happening in here. Yes. But, you know, on the other hand, the true test of how advanced this technology has gotten is whether it can generate a believable video of Will Smith aggressively eating spaghetti. Here it comes. And folks, <laughs> just look at this comparison. That's incredible. That's just one year of progress. Toss that film school degree in the trash and head on down to the unemployment office, you fucking scrub. It's over for you. Oh, hold on. Never mind. I'm, that, that's actually, that's just real life Will Smith embracing the meme and aggressively eating spaghetti in real life in an effort to restore his formerly pristine public persona. Yeah. It's not AI. But regardless, Will Smith eating spaghetti should be the prompt that this technology is benchmarked on. It's like a Turing test for AI image generation. Mm -hmm. No matter what they show you, okay, let's see Will Smith eating some spaghetti. Not as good as the real see Will Smith See if they start sweating. Spaghetti. But again, Sora is really impressive. But also, once you get a grasp on its limitations, it's difficult to say what specifically this would actually be useful for. And the only thing we can really think of is, of course, Bad, dishonest uses. No filmmaker will accept this level of quality, but for people pushing disinformation or running scams, this is a gift. The technology is in no state to really disrupt the motion picture industry in any meaningful way, although David Zaslav is probably trying every day. Oh, they're going to invest in it, yeah. but it's they're not going to get far. Within, the thing. within 15 years, we're going to have an AI minions movie. They're going to they're fire people under this pretense like they have been, but yeah. like they still have nothing to show for it, and I think they are at least with the the existing stuff, realizing like, oh, hmm, maybe it's not as capable as we thought it was. Wait till this gets into the hands of Uwe Boll. You're going to see some, some I feel crazy like, shit. I feel like for as shitty a filmmaker as he is, he actually does care about the craft enough <laughs> yeah, to yeah. be really fucking hostile to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's not going to, it's no. not going to change the film industry, but uh, well, it is in a state where we do now have to question the veracity of anything we see online, even more than we already do, which is a lot. Yeah. It's a, this is a culture of distrust that is only getting more distrustful with every new technological advance. And that's bad. Can we agree that that's bad? And it's especially bad when the potential for AI to actually improve our lives, that's always just like, oh, just you wait, check back in five years, you'll see. What does this but do for anyone? The potential for it to make our lives worse right here and now is is obvious your average person like i, I i'm at, someone's gonna tell me in the comments but like your average person like why do they need a text to video generator in general yeah this one especially i'm like i want one of these people to just tell me what is this for what problem does this solve like it is look i'm impressed that's crazy didn't know a computer could do that yeah. but i want you to describe a specific task or problem that this solves for your average person. Yeah, no, not even that, just like for anyone. Yeah. Because like I already, we've already explained how in like the filmmaking industry, this really is not nearly as yeah. useful as you might seem at first glance. But like, like what does this solve? And why is it worth uh, the insane amounts of cloud computing and That's carbon the other emissions thing. That's that go the other thing. Is like, you're, you thought that cranking out an AI generated image or text was intensive and creating carbon emissions, try doing a fucking movie or even a 10 second clip because how many images is, yeah. is that? It's how, 30, 30 images per second, basically. Like how does this scale uh, without requiring a lot of money from the people who use it? But also how does it even scale on the back end? Because like Sam Altman, like literally said recently, we talked about it. He's like, yeah. Um, so we're hoping that the whole fusion thing works out. Yeah. Like, uh, kind of need fusion to happen We are soon. not in a moment <laughs> in time where we need to be creating more carbon emissions. We need to be doing much, much less. We, I feel like we should all pause and be like, look, 
pretty cool tech concept. Yeah. Let's, let's solve uh, so many other problems before we get to this. Because the oceans are heating up. The, 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 the sky is going to choke us. Yeah. The hurricanes are the size of entire states. The big ones come in any moment now. Do we really need someone typing in that they want to see an old lady blowing out candles on a birthday yeah. cake? It's just so weird because I feel like in a previous decade, like you could have pretty much this exact thing happen and be like, oh, that's really cool. That's exciting. I hope they keep working on it. Whereas like today with every new announcement, it's like, holy shit, any fucking company that isn't like investing in this technology right now, getting in on the ground floor is going to get left in the dust. You need the AI. Invest in the companies who are making the AI. Then you have Do like now. some actual like humble company just <laughs> going by making a decent profit and just getting smoked by all these companies that are getting like massive investments and doing mergers and acquisitions and just hyping up all I mean, it's been great for stock. the stock market. Uh, <laughs> NVIDIA? Uh, yeah, yeah, seven years ago, I bought what was at the time, I think like two <laughs> shares of NVIDIA and it's like split twice since then. Um, it's uh, the best investment I've ever made. And at the time, I was just like, well, I like those graphics cards. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's gone up by like over a thousand percent. And every day, like today, it was uh, like shares of NVIDIA just today were up like $50 yeah, a earning, share. Yeah, earnings today. But like, yeah. that's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, you know, if you're a NASDAQ company, you're it, much like with the NFTs and the crypto. If Line you're, go up. If you're not yeah. talking about all the ways that you are adding AI to your product, uh, your shares aren't going to go up. God, the entire fucking economy is just... It's a feedback loop. It's balancing on a bunch of people just shaking hands and talking to each other and inventing things that don't need to exist to perpetuate a fucking economic cycle that doesn't seem real. I don't know. I don't know. I just... It's frustrating. Anyways, uh, yeah, my biggest pet peeve with this is that it's just fucking blowing smoke into the sky. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool magic trick. Yeah, like if you go and to taking the... people's jobs in the process. Yeah, taking people's jobs, and I believe taking a lot of people's jobs who will have to be rehired <laughs> at some point. Yeah, uh, because the companies thinking they're replacing workers with this shit are going to hit a wall where they're like, it's actually it, not nearly as useful it, as we thought it would be. It's always so satisfying seeing uh, like programmers posting the emails that they get back from companies that they were laid off from. Like, yeah. hey, um, we're going to bring back your contract for six months. Yeah. Uh, we're going to give you whatever you want. We thought we could automate your job. Turns out... It made things a lot shit. worse. Shit. <laughs> You, like it's like the IT guy opening it up and it's just a rat nest of cables. Yeah. Like, yeah, we had a computer doing things. Well, what was the worst that could happen? An idiot could do this job. Not me, the boss yeah. who sits at the desk and goes, click it, clack. <laughs> Anyways, the AI people can say that this is all cope coming from us. Fine, we can take it. I guess we'll see. In the meantime, let's read once again from tech commentator Ed Zitrone's Where's Your Ed At newsletter. By the way, he has a new podcast. Yeah. Also check that out. His latest piece, though, manages to articulate a lot of this better than either of us can because he's smarter. And it's, he's English. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long read that you should check out by clicking the link down in the description. But this section here gets to the heart of it for us. Despite what fantasists may tell you, these are not kinks to work out of artificial intelligence models. These are the hard limits the restraints that come when you try to mimic knowledge with mathematics. You cannot fix hallucinations, the times when a model authoritatively tells you something that isn't true or creates a picture of something that isn't right, because these models are predicting things based off of tags in a data set, which it might be able to do well, but can never do so flawlessly or reliably. It continues, this is a problem that dramatically limits how much one can rely on generative AI, and it's one that compounds severely with the complexity of what you're asking it to do. Words can be copy-pasted and edited, and citations can be checked. Images, however, are much tougher to edit, and videos are an entirely different beast, especially if you're generating lifelike humans or animals. While Sora is interesting and potentially quite scary to filmmakers, it's important to consider some practical questions, like how can someone actually make something useful out of this? And how do I get this model to do the same thing every time without fail? While an error in a 30 second long clip might be something you might miss, once you see one of these strange visual hallucinations, it's impossible to ignore them. The assumption is that audiences are stupid and ignorant and just won't care. And I firmly disagree. I think regular people will find this deeply offensive. Yes, 
Yeah, and here's a few more stray sentences from the article that we like. We keep running into the problem that these things are interesting, surprising, but not particularly useful for anything. Sora's outputs can mimic real-life objects in a genuinely chilling way, but its outputs, like Dolly and ChatGPT, are marred by the fact that these models do not actually know anything. Once you get past the idea that you can now generate an almost useful video that lasts roughly a minute, one must consider the practical applications of this kind of product. Yeah, like, like we mentioned <laughs> earlier, like, okay. Uh, even Microsoft struggled to find compelling use cases for their $7 million AI Super Bowl commercial, and these use cases are even narrower once you realize that generative video is so much more restrained by its hallucinations. Where will Sora be useful? Generative AI's greatest threat is that it's capable of creating a certain kind of bland, generic content very quickly and cheaply. Yeah, and that's we've seen that with the, the text, um, just Amazon and the internet in general being, it just has way more crap in it now. Yes. And uh, the images, it's like, you, you know, it was very, at the beginning, like there was some cool shit, but now it's like, you can tell just kind of intuitively when you see AI generated art. Yeah, we've evolved to recognize AI art. It is interesting. Like yes. it has a look. It's a, it's very hard to like put your finger on what exactly well, it is, but. I, for me, it's waxy. It looks shiny, waxy. It looks like a, a plastic rendering. It's waxy and I, I would also say it's busy but without being detailed. Yes, there's a lot going on. Uh, shadows are much harsher. Uh, skin in general is like it has a filter on it. And I, I'd say it, it, it's all weirdly like reminiscent of like a type of image that is sort of like 10 to 15 years out of date. Mm -hmm. It's like behind the trend in a weird way. That's hard to articulate too, yeah. but you can just tell. And it, it, it does have this kind of blandness to it where like if it was drawn by a person, you'd be like, wow, that was really talented. Why did they put all that work into it? This doesn't say anything. Or do it. This is meaningless. Yes. Uh, anyways, the bulk of the article following the topic of Sora, though, it's a really great case for this entire generative AI push being a huge tech bubble with potentially disastrous consequences for the whole tech sector if the hype dies down. Because right now, it's still pretty much all hype about what this stuff will be able to do rather than what it can do. And yet all the big tech companies are pumping absolutely insane amounts of money into it. Yeah, the amount of like cloud computing and, uh, and GPUs, it's it's fucking insane. Like the, the, they're preparing for a world that is not yet guaranteed, which is that is like the def definition of a bubble. Again, it, uh, it's worth a read and Edzatron is worth a follow. He's the smiling man after all. The smiling man. Uh, and then his podcast we mentioned earlier, it's called Better Offline. He covers this stuff even more, so check that out. Anyway, Sora was the big AI news this week, but uh, meanwhile, ChatGPT lost its goddamn mind. A perfect example, for, <laughs> a real button on this whole topic. It went rogue in new exciting ways yeah. uh, on Tuesday. It started exhibiting behavior similar to a human experiencing a severe stroke. All work and no play Which, makes ChatGPT a very angry boy. Like, it's similar to a stroke. Like I've actually been around someone when they had a fucking stroke, and it, this is like scarily similar to that, where just like the connections stop working, and Things just like it's yeah. it's at first glance you're like okay they're talking, but it's just like they're not saying anything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a nice throwback to the early days, like less than a year ago, <laughs> when these AI chatbots were a lot more unpredictable. It was randomly switching between languages, it was mixing up words, getting stuck in weird loops, and completely ignoring the user's prompts. Um, here's one example where it suggests a meeting agenda. Coinage of the meeting and docket conflux five minutes. Lilt off together and vindicate the things to be seen as centermosts for the meet. Two, develop goosing and walk mark rack, 15 minutes. Ghost line the flux and trick from the first telling till now being thankful for the outfetch and needlework on the eaves for the novial pith. <laughs> Three, <laughs> hitches and hefts reproof, 10 minutes. Ethel the books, any concrete scaries, and the sigh of the hitches, with a primal house on the list for the layoff and gavel vaulting. Mm, of course, the gavel vaulting. My favorite goat that gets burned <laughs> down every year. <laughs> Four, forsaking and tough ship fire lining, 10 minutes. Grapnel, any in one sleeve lids, end day tilters, and the off book for gadding or grid scale into the working. <laughs> Five, Timecraft, Sari, and Skiak. Ten minutes. Chuck it up for the big line. <laughs> Spare the news on the noonies. And attraction for Tic Tac 
on the terror shank and rooming. Number six, action oils and next meetings, point blank, five minutes. Slipe out the line to the new skiffs and Purdue to mount for the up and joining and the take twos for the next meeting. Seven, Q&A and close Canock, five minutes. Any twofers, the erst on and a chapelation for the close as a den, what's for the mooning in a new light? Great meeting, guys. Uh, you, know, be, you know what's funny? I screw up words all the time in normal sentences, and I fucking nailed that. If you just give me, I, I can read gibberish yeah. all day. That's why I like that uh, Flanger video, the classic clip where the guy's like, hey, Oh, yeah. The quantum pentabulator? <laughs> That's the one. One of my favorites. Yeah, That's a favorites. great one. I watched that one very, on, a, on a regular basis. That one and uh, the, what's his name? Uh, Ashton Kutcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are the storytellers. That one's always hard to find. He's try, probably trying to bury it. I need to bookmark or just save just that one locally. Because yeah. like, I never know what to search for. It's always like Ashton Kutcher tech. Uh, tech meeting or whatever. And it's like, it takes me so long to find it. We got the capacity! <laughs> We got these new Pentiums! And it, it's like a fucking sketch. There's people like nodding and writing. Yeah. And he's just saying gibberish. Yeah. And it's clearly like they got B-roll. Like, can we get a shot of the crowd? Like everyone nodding and yeah. like really Now write stuff about down them? like you're... Uh, yeah. And then we'll bring Ashton in here and... Yeah. It's a great video. I I need to track that one down. And Someone will link it in the comments. It permanently. Uh, but uh, yeah, that and the Quantum Pentabulator. They are great. If you want just a perfect... Uh, one's actually like a bit. Yes, the, joke. the other is It's a classic joke the, that they used to play at like conventions for engineers. It yeah. was like it was an in joke for them. And then the Ashton the Kutcher one along. is a guy who uh, at one point thought he was Steve Jobs. I think he still kind of does. Steve Jobs, if Steve Jobs' best friend was convicted a sex offender. Yeah, that's why he's uh, in the shadows right now. Yeah. Anyway, there's a ton of other examples of like similar nonsense from Chat GPT uh, losing its mind on Twitter and Reddit. It's especially fascinating, though, because it's totally different from previous times that these chatbots have gone off the rails. New exciting ways. It's just full-on word salad, but still in a way that vaguely resembles real language. In some examples, the answer is perfectly normal for a while before suddenly going crazy like mid-paragraph mm -hmm. and then continuing on for several more pages, as if a major artery to the brain suddenly got blocked yes, it's, and uh, deprived of oxygen. It's reading all of Mitch McConnell's speeches. <laughs> it did freeze up like Mitch. Mm -hmm. Except Mitch freezes. They should let Mitch keep talking after he freezes. Yeah, he has like the windows shut down sound. Yeah. Dung. Dung. <laughs> so OpenAI has since fixed the glitch. But we'd be very curious to know what exactly happened here. But then again, OpenAI themselves might not even know. These things aren't the, black boxes. You just sort of revert to uh, the, the previous saw, build and that's it. The one I saw was like, it was just like listing facts. And it got to like number 20 or 30 or something and it just kept listing the same fact over and over again and it would not stop and all I could imagine was like the logging machine from Fern Gully just spewing oil yep. and smoke cool. just for literally no reason it's like it's someone just letting their car idle in the driveway the, the computer version of that it's it's the it's the digital version of rolling coal you're doing it because you can yeah. and because you think it's cool <laughs> and no one else likes it mm -hmm. Yeah, it's digital coal rolling. All this AI shit. <laughs> Same with NFTs. And that's a, that's another like snowball thing is because all the NFTs are using AI generated images as their fucking NFT graphics shit now. Yeah. It's, well, luckily no one's buying them. Yeah. So that's good. Oh, we, I was at, I went I went to lunch and there was uh, two clear geniuses at the table next to me talking about their crypto investments and all their NFTs that are coming back at any moment. Any moment. I mean, I hope they do for their sake. I don't. I was. I, I hated the conversation, and I wanted to say something, but I just ate my soup and I left. Yeah. yeah. Keep the peace. Anyways, we got more news coming up in just a moment. But first, this episode is sponsored by Shopify. You probably already know them. You probably already love them. It's Shopify, the best platform for shopping, hosting your own business, and keeping track of all your shipments in one place. There's a ton of amazing duos out there in the world, and look at this. We're a perfect example. But the best duo is, of course, Shopify and you. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million order stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. 
Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. No matter how big you wanna grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. We love Shopify's simple and easy to use app because it keeps track of all of your online shipments. You can even connect other platforms so that your tracking is all in one place. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the United States. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash newsday, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash newsday now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash newsday. All right, back to the news now. And, you know, with the AI stuff out of the way, you know what that means. Elon! Elon! He said the thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sorry, haters. The numbers don't lie. Last week's video about the fucking rusty Cybertrucks is somehow our most viewed video ever. It by escaped, like a big margin. It escaped contagion. We have absolutely no clue why that happened, but clearly that big stupid car gets clicks. So let's kick off the Elon half of the show with some more Cybertruck news about the biggest concern people have over this thing, aside from how ugly it is. Uh, it seems like the kind of car that's going to kill a lot of people. Yeah. It's two to 3,000 pounds heavier than equivalent combustion engine pickup trucks, and it's covered in sharp edges. It's bulletproof, but you're more likely to get in a collision with another car than get shot at by someone with a Tommy gun. So how will those bulletproof stainless steel panels perform in a collision? Hmm. Well, fun fact, uh, we still have no idea. No one fucking knows. That's odd. Yeah, so here's Jalopnik. I reached out to both the National Traffic Safety Administration and the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, both of which told Jalopnik there are currently no plans to test the Cybertruck for crash worthiness. You see, not every vehicle on the road is crash tested. Lower volume models, rare or expensive vehicles often slip under the radar of regulatory organizations, which tend to look to do the most good for the most amount of people. NHTSA already released its list of vehicles it plans to crash test for 2024 in December and while several EVs made the cut, including VinFast models, the Tesla Cybertruck was not one of them. The IIHS isn't bothering with it either, until more people are interested in buying one or production really ramps up. Tesla implied crash testing the truck in a video it showed last November during an event surrounding the initial delivery of the first Cybertruck, but considering we have no data provided from that test, it's of no use to safety-conscious consumers. Not to mention Tesla's recent past of releasing misleading videos would make any wise consumer pause. But even in its own video, the truck seems to shatter rather than crumple in a head-on collision. Yeah, I guess that it that, makes sense if no one's buying this. Yeah, if, if uh, yeah, we, we still don't have like a firm number on how many of these things actually exist. But like it's, I've seen the, like, I've seen one. I've in seen person. one as well. It's got, a, I think it's like low hundreds maybe at this point. My, maybe not even that. So yeah, it may, makes sense that they're they're not going to put a bunch of these things through a battery of tests if there's just a handful of these on the road across the entire country. I'd say they're maybe looking at it, you know, there's only so many Cybertruck drivers. Whereas I'd say you could possibly look at it from another point of view, whereas uh, anyone sharing the road with one of these things is also a potential victim. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess your chances are still pretty good. If you find yourself on the road with a Cybertruck, you know, pinch yourself because you this is your unlucky day. Yeah, well, at least you'll <laughs> probably see it coming. Ding, ding, what is that? What is that shit mobile? Uh-huh. So, yeah, that's fun. A 7,000-pound tank with a giant lithium battery in it, driving on public roads with sketchy self-driving technology, seems to me like a potential danger. Also, anyone but, driving this thing is a fucking asshole, so but, watch out. Yeah, I guess we'll just, we'll just have to wait until one of these things is in an actual real-world severe crash to find out. Probably won't be long. So, yeah. Go, we'll, we'll check back on that when when that happens. But moving on now to Twitter, the oh. platform currently known as X. If you've used it at all in recent months, you know that it is absolutely swarming with inauthentic automated content on a level previously unseen, despite Elon previously claiming that getting rid of those bots was his number one priority and that destroying the old verification system would supposedly do that. He's going to get rid of the bots or die trying. 
R.I.P. <laughs> so, yeah, the bots are now truly, truly inescapable, replying to virtually every post on the platform, sometimes within just seconds. But it's hard to get a grasp on exactly how bad the problem is. Fortunately, Matt Binder of Mashable looked into it after seeing X claim in a press release that engagement metrics during this year's Super Bowl uh, broke Twitter's all-time records. Things are going great. Wow. Uh, here's that reporting. However, it appears that a significant portion of that traffic on X could be fake, according to data provided to Mashable by CHEQ, a leading cybersecurity firm that tracks bots and fake users. According to CHEQ, a whopping 75.85% of traffic from X to its advertising clients' websites during the weekend of the Super Bowl was fake. 75%, three quarters of all of the traffic was fake. You gotta wonder why that many bots would be clicking on that many ads, too. Because they have <laughs> to reach certain goals to get that sweet, sweet money. But that would mean someone is specifically telling these bots to, to click on those ads. Whereas if you're running like a botnet for spams and scams like that, clicking on the ads doesn't seem, I mean, you might tell it to click an ad every once in a while to like seem like a real person using the product, but like, Clicking that many ads, that's, I don't know. Who would, who would have the, the means and the motivation to set up such a botnet? Who's As someone say? who really needs a win right now. I, yeah. <laughs> Quote, I've never seen anything even remotely close to 50%, not to mention 76%. CHEQ founder and CEO Guy Titunovich told Mashable regarding X's fake traffic data. I'm amazed. I've never, ever, ever, ever seen anything even remotely close. CHEQ's data for this report is based on 144,000 visits to its clients' sites that came from X during Super Bowl weekend from Friday, February 9th up until the end of Super Bowl Sunday on February 11th. The data was collected from across CHEQ's 15,000 total clients. It's a small portion of the relevant data, and it's not scientifically sampled, but it nonetheless suggests a dramatic trend. Jesus. So yeah, basically CHEQ is a company that analyzes... Oh, I get it. Check. Check. They analyze social media traffic for advertisers to give the advertisers an idea of how much traffic their ads are really getting from authentic users and not bots. Mm -hmm. And apparently the bot traffic on X is just totally off the charts in a way that is basically unprecedented. Uh, back to the article. When X's Super Bowl traffic is compared to other social media platforms during the same time period, the bot issue on Musk's platform appears even more stark. CHEQ also provided data to Mashable pertaining to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. In terms of fake traffic, no other platform came close to X's nearly 76%. Out of more than 40 million visits from TikTok, only 2.56% were determined to be fake. Facebook sent 8.1 million visits, and 2.01% of the monitored visits were classified as inauthentic. And over on Instagram, only 0.73% of the 68,700 visits from the platform were fake. Titunovich tells Mashable that it's not out of the ordinary to see spikes in fake traffic on social media platforms during big events like U.S. elections. However, he has never seen anything close to X's 75.85%. Wow. Uh, he also revealed that the numbers weren't much better for the entire month of January with the other platforms all getting less than 3% fake traffic compared to X's 32%. Insane. <laughs> 10 times worse. Yeah, that seems bad. And he compared this year's Super Bowl to last year's when Twitter also got less than 3%. So this problem has demonstrably gotten worse. Not just gotten worse, catastrophically yeah, worse. Yeah, this is extremely Without bad. Without comparison. There, yeah. there is no other platform that does it this bad, folks. And it's almost like it's this bad on purpose. You would have to assume that at some point. Not me, personally, but everyone watching would have to assume that, I assume. So this problem, yes, it's gotten way worse under Elon's ownership, which is obvious to anyone who uses the platform or has even written a tweet. My in pussy in bio. It's a meme at this point. But yeah, the numbers back it up as well. And uh, meanwhile, you know, Elon Musk is just forging ahead with his great replacement theory nonstop on the timeline instead of uh, doing anything constructive with the platform. Yeah, he's really, uh, really convinced that um, we let illegal immigrants vote, which is just simply not true. It is. Um, I want I wanted to say bizarre, but it is frightening that one of the most powerful people in the world 
is constantly spewing the same talking points that's literally on page one of multiple mass shooter manifestos. Yeah, that's a good point. It's it's actually really scary that he's doing that. I don't like it. No. Not one bit. Anyway, let's close out the show with some non-AI, non-Elon news. Oh, oh, thank goodness. It's crypto news. But, you know, crypto's over, so it's sort of crypto aftermath news. Because remember Sam Bankman-Fried, the former golden boy of crypto? He's looking at potentially decades behind bars when he is formally sentenced next month. But he, in the meantime, he's been in jail at Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center. And this week, we got our first photo of him behind bars, posing with five other gentlemen and looking as unkempt and awkward as ever. What do I do with my hands? I guess I'll just hold them together like this. Yeah. The photo was provided to independent crypto journalist Tiffany Fong by the man standing next to SBF, a uh, former member of the Bloods called G-Lock. And she also interviewed G-Lock in a video. So here's Vice. The interview provided a small window of view into Bankman-Fried's life in prison. G-Lock said that Bankman-Fried has been not showering much, if at all, and had begun to look like a toothpick and scruffier than a motherfucker. However, he added Bankman-Fried had garnered a positive reputation during his short time around the other inmates. While G-Lock did say Bankman-Fried was weird as shit, he added that he was considered a good guy that didn't snitch. Free Sam Bankman, G-Lock said. (laughs) Sam Bankman, funk. Ooh, what is that? He smells like shit, but he's got a good heart. That man is too stinky to stab. Mm -hmm. Well played, sir. Like some kind of toxic goo would seep out of him. Can't get close enough to him to hurt him. That's actually a good tactic. Yeah. He's got stink lines coming off of him and everything. I mean, listen, if I was in jail, I'd be terrified to go in the shower as well, but I don't know. Look, it's not going to be fun, but also maybe don't commit like a trillion dollars worth of crimes. Yeah. That's step one. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh Don't defraud literally millions of people. On the complete polar opposite of that, there's an entirely separate discussion that we've also had many times about how America's prison systems are uh, horrifically... Yeah. uh, Yeah, we we are obsessed with this idea that it's not not good enough that people are locked in a a confined space forever. they they also have to be terrified and uncomfortable the entire and time as potentially well. Potentially die or get raped. Like yeah. it is yeah, it's it's, it's a very, very bad cruel instinct, you know, where yes. we uh a lot of people are like the idea that prison rape is a thing. It's very bad. It is not based on any sort of rehabilitation or reaffirmation. No. It is strictly punishment and dehumanizing behavior. Yeah. So that's a completely separate uh, thing to talk yeah, about, but I'm just saying. But he seems to be fitting in. He's got his co-op team. Got with him. a crew. Yeah, he's got the. It's like a player select. I wonder if he, because when uh, Barry Madoff went to prison, he immediately uh, that brilliant mind of his, he figured out that there was some like price uh, discrepancy in the uh, mess hall. Oh yeah, he fixed the canteen. It, yeah. So everyone loves him. He he came up with this trading scheme where he basically like cornered the market on like Swiss Miss uh, hot chocolate packets, mm-hmm. and was just like sitting on a mountain of hot chocolate and had like a whole crew like protecting his supply. So I wonder if SBF is uh, going to have a similar similar thing. He'll get there once he gets sentenced and gets settled into something that isn't the detention center. Because right now he's like at a localized jail. Yeah, that's much. another. The place he's at is like one of the most notorious uh, jails in the country. Um, MDC Brooklyn. Like people get sent there for minor crimes, which they, you know, you are guilt- innocent until proven guilty. You, you, they're awaiting trial, and they fucking die in there before any of that. This mm. happens like regularly. It's bad. Again, the, the America's prison system totally fucked. Not saying it isn't. Just I mean, about the, SBF. maybe the entire justice system just as a whole. Yeah, throw it away. Anyways, that's it for uh, this week's episode of Tech News Day. We do, of course, have more coming up for you in the form of news dump and then weekly weird news. But in the meantime. We got all the content you can watch. We got Trump's clown shoes have been released. And uh, they're sold out. Sorry, can't get them. Too oh, hard. but you can. We might talk about that. Because yes. uh, what, we, what we predicted came true. The people are flipping that shit. Uh, I, we can talk about it tomorrow. Uh, I found, I was looking on eBay at them. And a lot of the ones that have actual bids on them that are over like 1000 or $2,000, they're 
literally say that you're only getting a photo picture printed out of the shoes and they still have multiple bids. The grift never stops. Yes. He's the king of the grift. Oh, forgot to say, hey, like the video. Yeah, Click please. Click the like button. Come on, what are we doing here? We work, uh, we work for those likes and you're gonna give them to us. Please. Well, we're gonna come down there and give you a little American justice. No, we won't. Just click the like button. Uh, we also got Trump's debts over there on the side of the video. He's got a lot of debts. He has a lot of debts, and he's got to sell a lot of shoes. A lot of shoes. Check out both of those videos. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. Like the video, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.